Hi, this is Ruth Power from Piano Picnic, and you are listening to the Musicality Podcast. Hi, I'm Christopher, founder of Musical Youth, and welcome to the Musicality Podcast. I am super excited to be joined on the show today by Ruth Power, the creator of Piano Picnic, a method for learning to play piano by ear that remarkably manages to teach it in lessons so short and simple that they almost guarantee a student will succeed. I admire and agree with Ruth's perspective and her approach to teaching play-by-ear skills, so much so that when time came to look for a new resident pro for piano at Musical U, Ruth was the first person who sprang to mind. We talk a bit towards the end of the conversation about her work here at Musical U and how she's helping our members to apply their core training directly on the keyboard in fun and creative ways. This conversation was great fun, and there are lots of good piano-specific nuggets in here for anyone who is a pianist or wants to become one. But as always, most of the discussion is equally relevant and interesting, whatever instrument you play. We talk about Ruth's own journey of learning to play by ear, and the distinct phases she went through to develop a fully-fledged ability on keyboard. We talk about the particular challenges of playing by ear on piano compared with other instruments. And we discuss the terrible piece of advice she was given early on about how to learn to play by ear, and she shares her top tip for actually succeeding with it. That is just the start. We also talk about humming, we talk about bass lines, about why and how modern instrument learning can look different to the traditional methods, we talk about active listening, and a lot more. You're going to get a ton out of this one. My name's Christopher Sutton, and this is the Musicality Podcast from Musical U. Welcome to the show, Ruth. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. So I was saying to you just before we hit record that I've really enjoyed prepping for this interview because I knew quite a bit about yourself and Piano Picnic now and what you're up to. And obviously you're working with us at Musical U as well. But I didn't know all that much yeah. about your own backstory. I kind of knew the highlights, but not really the tale behind it. So I've been really looking forward to this yeah. chance to understand a bit more about where you're coming from as a musician and how you've become the person that now leads Piano Picnic and helps people play by ear. So I wonder if we could start at the beginning and tell the story of Ruth Power. How did you first get started in music? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I think I started, um, I actually started with recorder, which is the noblest of instruments, as everyone knows. Um, and uh, my older sister actually played the piano. Um, I would have been, uh, I don't know, six or so. And um, I did sort of the horrible younger sister thing where she, as soon as she got off the piano, I'd jump on and slam it and <laughs> <laughs> just embarrass her. And um, I, yeah, I think mum noticed that I was finding it cool and interesting and so I she made me take piano lessons to start with I also had a friend actually really like my earliest memory of um learning by ear and the idea of it was I had a friend um I think when I was about seven and she was playing fair release and I was at her house and um she was teaching me the opening bits of Feralese, the dee doo dee, you know, as you do. And then I went home, would listen to the song and try and figure out some more. So, so the learning by ear came very quickly uh, after starting to learn the piano when I was really young. Yeah. And then I did all the, um, I went through all the grades, had many, many different teachers <laughs> and, um, and did competitions and recitals and all that sort of thing. But all the while through that sort of traditional training, I was always mostly just passionate about what I could do on the side with playing pop songs and, <laughs> and TV themes and things like that. Interesting. So tell us a bit more about the interplay between those two, because I think it's fairly unusual for someone to manage to juggle those two. You meet a lot of people who are firmly in one camp of sheet music reading or playing by ear and kind of grow up with one or the other, but not that many manage to kind of keep the two going side by side. How was it for you? Did you identify more with one of them than the other? I, yeah, I, I what I wanted to do was to play cool songs <laughs> uh, what I thought was cool songs you know sort of stuff I'd hear on the radio um but when I was growing up there wasn't a uh 
there what didn't well I didn't know about any sort of way to learn how to do that the only way especially you know in the small town that I came from um, was to go to a classical piano teacher and learn the traditional way and since um, in our family we were allowed to have one thing (laughs) <laughs> that we could do um and my parents would work very hard to pay for that one thing I made sure that I kept up with my lessons and my exams but what I was really doing and not practicing all that much the exam material was just playing songs that I liked and the soundtrack from Romeo and Juliet mostly <laughs> <laughs> that the Baz Luhrmann film yeah yeah <laughs> nice. yeah and was there anything that helped you? You mentioned a friend there showing you a bit of fur release. Was there anything, obviously you're in the formal lessons for the sheet music side of things, but was the playing by ear purely dabbling and teaching yourself or did you have any resources or teachers or peers that helped you figure that out? Yeah, well, it was kind of, that That, that was sort of my early days with it. Um, when I got to um, sort of in high school age, I... Um, we, we used to go to church and church teams are a great um, source of inspiration when you're playing music. Um, and there was a keyboardist at, um, at our church. Uh, her name was Bridget. And I talk about her a lot in my piano picnic emails and <laughs> various correspondence because I think that everyone should have a Bridget. And uh, my Bridget, uh, she was just the most amazing pianist I had ever seen play from just some letters on a page, you know, which I now was, know as a lead sheet. But at the time I was like, what is she looking at? That is so <laughs> bizarre. It's not dots, it's just letters. Like, it's really strange and they don't even make words. Um, but yeah, so I, um, I, was very, um, I was very intense as a young pianist. I went through a lot of different teachers. If I didn't like what they were teaching me, I would change. And I said to my mum, I need her to teach me. <laughs> Uh, what she knows and so my mum hooked it up and then um, I had some lessons with Bridget and it was the best thing ever she taught me how to play chords um, how to play different rhythms with chords just just everything that I now love and obsess about over music I see and Mm. for anyone listening who has heard of a lead sheet but never tried playing from one could you give a a kind of glimpse of what that difference was like why was it such why was it so much more appealing to you to learn the lead sheet way versus the note by note staff notation way yeah I just I, I think there's there was there's two advantages of lead sheets I think it allows you to pl- if you already know a song basically in your head it allows you to pick up how to play it really quickly um because a lead sheet is the you know, just naming the chords or with chord symbols or, or sometimes they write out the, the chord names. So you can just read those chord names and with your, your knowledge of chords, um, be able to play those and play those in a rhythm that you basically know the song has and therefore be able to play a song, I think, much quicker than if you were reading, you know, that rhythm note for note off the page. I see. Yeah. And so when you started learning the lead sheet method with your friend, it was more a matter of finding a song you liked and constructing your own way of playing it based on the lead sheet. Is that right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And also that opens up the whole ball game of um, being able to play parts within a song that you know that aren't the piano part as well, which makes things really interesting. So it was that whole... I mean, with her, it was just chords and playing off a lead sheet. But from there, um, everything I learned after that point just completely changed the game. Mm. Well, I don't want to jump the gun too much, but thinking about this phase of your story, I do want to ask you one particular question, which is about the interplay of learning kind of the serious technique of playing piano and learning these more kind of creative, expressive activities on the keyboard, because I think Mm -hmm. adult learners in particular, we often get our knickers in a twist, feeling like we should do one or we should do the other. And particularly if you're at the very beginning stage of both, I think it can be quite tricky to know how to balance those two. Like, should you master the technique before you try this playing by ear thing? Or should you just go with the playing by ear and the technique will figure itself out? 
And I've, I've always found it interesting that at Piano Picnic you offer a super basics course that addresses the technique side of things. So I'd just love to hear a little bit about your experience juggling those two in those early years and also how you think yeah. about it now for, say, an adult beginner. I, uh, technique, I, um, I'm not the most technical pianist. <laughs> I, 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 um, I say I did all the recitals and competitions. I didn't, or, uh, you know, I wasn't the one that was taking away the trophy all the time, um, by any means. Uh, I think maybe my, my left hand is still a bit heavy, but, um, <laughs> but I think that the technique, I, I, I used to sort of had a love hate with it because, um, I, I'm not the type of person that likes to get something uh, perfect. I'd just rather be able to play the song and jam it and have fun with it. And that's what I, I like to get my students to do as well. Um, I think the whole perf the pursuit of perfection is a sort of a different approach to, to playing your instrument. Um, but I also think that um, to a certain extent, learning the technique of your instrument allows you to have more sort of tricks up your sleeve for when you want to improvise for instance I think that um lo a lot of my go-to rhythms w when I'm when I'm sort of comping with chords or um writing a song uh um are rhythms that I learned from a piece that I learned at some point you know so I think the the balance is good a little bit of technique and a lot of learning by ear yeah very good yeah I think um I think that's a really good way of putting it. I was thinking of this this week, myself in my own musical life, I was returning to playing bass a little bit. And, you know, I was just kind of sitting down and playing what I felt like playing, but I, I was quickly conscious that my fingers were not as um, fluid as they once were on bass. And my, you know, left hand fretting technique was not quite up to it, which meant even though I knew which notes to play and I, I knew exactly what I wanted to play, my left hand just wasn't quite keeping up. And I was thinking, oh, I might need to do some scales and exercises and, and try and get this fluidity back. <laughs> and of course there are ways to make that fun and maybe we can talk about that a bit later on, but it, it just really, I think that's why it stuck in my head to ask you about this because I think it is a, a tricky balance sometimes when we, feel obliged to do one or excited to do the other to try and find a way to combine the two and make sure you have the requisite technique to empower you to play by ear yeah and i think developing technique um i think my attitude is based on the way that i learned technique when i was younger but um there's so many different things out there now different resources that you can use to make learning technique fun like for instance you mentioned the scales you can there's so many cool um apps and and, and backing tracks even within musical you and within piano pen i do backing tracks as well um that you can use to play your scales so you're playing scales but you're playing along to like a funky blues track or something so it's not as boring as just going da 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 you know you can make it into something cool and then when once you've played you know you can reward yourself once you've played the scale perfectly then you can um just jam on the back and track for a while or whatever you want to do absolutely yeah i was really enjoying um a conversation i had recently on the podcast with a pianist called josh wright who has a course that digs into piano technique but he yeah he takes it a step further and he's like every time you play a scale you should be consciously working on something more interesting <laughs> with that whether it's dynamics or phrasing or rhythms uh, you should use it as a vehicle for learning something else and that just kind of yeah. stuck in my head because i i like you I, i'm a proponent of this idea that even the technique practice should be musical in some sense it should be it should feel like playing music but i'd never really thought of structuring it in such a conscious way and I thought that was a really neat, neat way to approach it. Talk a little yeah, bit more about cool. um, your Super Basics course before we continue with the Ruth Power story. Um, tell us, how do you approach it? Because I, I heard you say something interesting on a podcast episode recently about the kind of modern landscape of learning music. And again, I think this is something that adult beginners often struggle with is, is it okay to just learn online or is it okay to study with an app? Or should we really be doing it in person with a teacher the way they've done it for hundreds of years? I wonder if you could just talk about your Super Basics course in particular and how you approach this idea of learning with internet resources. Yeah, so I think 
I think it's totally reasonable with the piano being such a traditional uh, and very, very old instrument um, for us to think that, well, that's the way it's always been learned, so that's the way we must continue to learn it. But we're not playing piano for the same purposes as, or or for the same reasons that necessarily people used to play. Um, and we're playing it in different ways as well. So I think it, make, it makes sense to me that as you know, technology is advances and there's more fun, fun ways to play the keyboard, more um, things that we can use the keyboard to contribute to as well, you know, with using, um, using the keyboard as sort of a, a mini instrument that you can plug into your iPad. And there's so many possibilities that I think the learning of the, of the keyboard can also um, become more contemporary as well. And so my approach with Super Basics is that it's all online. It's all sort of um, pre-recorded and, you know, there's video lessons and cheat sheets and backing tracks and all that sort of cool stuff. Um, but the main thing is it's accessible online anytime for anyone um, in, any, in any country whatsoever. You can do it in your own time. And also the other thing is the lessons are two minutes, on average, two minutes long. So you're consuming new information at two minutes at a time. And then I encourage you to stop. Um, and I do this with my in-person students as well. If they sit at the piano bench every day, then I'm happy, <laughs> even if it's for two minutes or five minutes. And I think it's the same with, with learning um, through the super, my Super Basics course and my Songs by Ears course as well. Um, I think it, it, even if you're, you're just making the habit to get on the piano, um, and you're just learning from a short lesson then and then the next day you do the same with a new lesson then you're building on every day you're building on that new information rather than the tendency traditionally is to have have a weekly lesson and then jam some uh, an hour-long practice session in the day before your lesson because you feel guilty for not practicing <laughs> like that's not the best way to um, progress in my opinion so I've had um, loads of students go through super basics and they say it's just like they didn't realize it was that easy to start didn't have to be this big deal <laughs> basically fantastic I, yeah. I'm reminded there's a quote I think is often attributed to Mark Twain where he was writing someone a letter and he began by saying I would have written you a shorter letter but I didn't have time and I think there's such a skill in condensing something down to be brief I think you are particularly good at this and I'm sure people listening would be surprised to hear that you can have a two-minute piano lesson and you are very very good at this and I think it it really does your students a service because as you say they're probably better off spending two minutes getting familiar with a new concept and then 10 minutes playing around with that and then it's a, a short practice session they can keep up day after day and that's where they'll really see the progress yeah, yeah. and then you're just so much more likely to actually keep it up long term if you know if you're like oh, i just have to make two minutes or you know and and even some of the lessons particularly in the super basics course you don't even have to have a piano for like you can start the course and just um just be watching the videos and going through the cheat sheets or you can even download a, a little keyboard app onto your phone and that's enough to actually just start which which I love because so many people are like I want to learn piano I don't want to like buy one before I've started yeah. you know so that kind of solves that problem a little bit very cool and you said something else really important there I think which is the difference in how we can learn piano today is mirrored in the different reason we might have for learning piano compared with the traditional. I think that that is such an important thing to stop and ask yourself if you're embarking on learning a new instrument is, what do I actually want this to look like? Because we inherit so much in terms of assumptions and expectations, and particularly with piano, because it has such an amazing history in the classical world of, you know, note perfect performances and recitals. And I, I have met so many people who have clearly just assumed that is what learning piano is. And they have this desire to play the keyboard, but actually if they stopped and asked themselves, probably what they wanted to do was play pop songs or just sit down and play and make something up. But they kind of start lessons yeah. with a teacher. The teacher gives them their hand on and their first Mozart piece and they're off and away. Yeah. <laughs> and they assume that's all there is to it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really, 
um, those are my people, the people that, I mean, even even people that maybe don't um, realize it just yet, but, you know, when, the realization when you're like, you know what, I just want to play songs. I just want to write songs and I just want to, uh, I just want to compose or improvise or I want to jam with my mates. Those, those are the, I, I like those people because I can definitely teach those people a thing or two. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So obviously playing by ear is something we specialize in teaching at Musical U. And so I'm not going to go as far as to say playing by ear is hard. It doesn't have to be hard to learn, but I am going to say somewhat provocatively, playing piano by ear well is really hard. <laughs> you know, relatively speaking, compared to other instruments, piano is quite a tricky one to really master playing by ear. And so you had this initial experience with your friend Bridget and you kind of got the hang of figuring things out from a lead sheet. How did you take mm -hmm. things on from there? How did your playing by ear learning progress? Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, prior, oh, I said that Bridget taught me chords. Prior to that, my learning by ear, you know, poking out the notes of Fair Elise or... Um, it was mostly about melodies and bass lines for me. So I was picking out, you know, one note at a time and I'm like, oh, I, I figured out this melody. I'm pretty cool, which is pretty cool. Um, but there kind of came a point when I, when I was introduced to chords uh, that I realized that there was this whole undertone, that sort of, I don't know, guts of music that I was sort of not getting when I was playing songs by ear. Um, and so that was when I, I mean, I didn't actually learn about chord progressions until I went to university, which is pretty late in, in life for a musician possibly. Um, but when I did, and I noticed that, you know, you, you could get chords to do things for you, basically, <laughs> you know, you can order chords around and be like, Hey, you do this and you send us back home and give us this feeling. And they're like, okay, got it. Um, once I realized that, I thought that was a really cool thing. And that's, that's how most songs work. A songwriter has, you know, told some chords, uh, put some chords together to actually tell a story or make you feel something that was opened up me being able to, to, um, figure out songs based on the effect that they had on me, if that makes sense. Yeah, it it's that sort of like listening, listening, internalizing what that listening is, is making you feel or, or what feeling it's given you put, put with your sort of air training skills. <laughs> and that's how you can kind of play a better version of it on the piano. Yeah. Very cool. And so in practical terms, did that mean you were no longer starting from a lead sheet? You were going purely by ear? Um, yes, able to, yes. Sometimes I still go back, <laughs> but, um, but it's been able to, you know, and, and having that skill is, is, is worthwhile mainly for the fact that, um, you're able to figure out a song without the internet, which is always a good thing. And, <laughs> and, uh, you know, not every song has a lead sheet and not every song has sheet music. So in a way you're opening up your uh, possibilities as a musician to play anything that is that you can think of. Gotcha. And when you said there that at university you learned about chord progressions, could you explain a bit more what you learned? What were they teaching you that in your head suddenly helped you with playing by ear? Yeah, um, so it's, it's harmony, really. So um, the chord functions of various the functions of various chords and where they can lead you and, and, and bring you back from, um, all that sort of thing. Yeah, basically. And you add that to your bass lines and your melodies and you've got like a full arrangement, which is, which sounds really impressive when someone else hears. Um, and I think that's what, uh, songs by ear, which is my, my course, um, sort of tries to tie together as a little bit of, chord knowledge a little bit of how to find a bass line and a bit of how to find the melody and then putting that together in a way that's uh gives you options for which sort of rhythms to play with those chords and um ideas of how to riff further with a melody and basically building an arrangement for it for any song that you want to work out and play great yeah so this is 
this is kind of the answer to my provocative question about piano being harder than other instruments to play by ear and it's why we invited you a while back to come and yeah. give a master class on arranging by ear because you know if you're playing say a trumpet solo by ear you're trying to figure out some cool jazz solo and you want to play it by ear essentially what we found is you need to learn the ear skills for pitch recognition so some kind of interval recognition or solfer approach so that you know what the note pitches are. And most musicians, most of the time, can kind of pick up the rhythm instinctively by ear. They can mimic back the rhythm fairly easily, even if they wouldn't be able to transcribe it, write it down in notation. And so that kind of pitch recognition is kind of enough to get you going playing a melody by ear. But as you just mm -hmm. kind of painted a picture of on keyboard, even melody plus bass line is gonna sound a bit like a skeleton. It's gonna sound a bit empty. Throwing some chords in there, just playing block chords on quarter notes is not going to sound too amazing. So you really do need more of a toolkit, more of a palette, and the corresponding chord recognition skills to make it work. Yeah, totally. You've just succinctly said it like I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think part of why I was able to was because I was looking again at your songs by ear course and because you structure it so nicely there. You know, you have <laughs> exercises to help people get just the melody down and then just kind of tune their ear into the bass line and one thing I wanted to pick up on there was you have them hum as a way to find those notes could you talk a little bit about that how you have your students use their voice to help them figure out the notes by ear yeah I mean I, I do it with my in-person students as well um, mm -hmm. despite them being uh, sometimes uh, not so keen to be singing in front of me um, I try and uh basically it's it's the idea of um when, when when we hear a when we know how the song goes in our head and we're like i'm going to work that out on the piano and you go to the piano and you start playing notes as soon as you do that it's all over <laughs> and um in a way because you whatever it was in your head is gone because now the the louder noise is of course the piano the piano is going to be louder than whatever was was happening in your head so the idea of humming a note is is hearing it in your head humming it out loud so that when you press a key on the piano your the the note that you're humming is as dominant as the piano note so that you can actually try as hard as you can to hold the note that you're humming and not be sort of swayed either way by the by the note that you randomly find on the piano and that way you can uh, start playing a few more notes and eventually get to the one that you're humming. So that's the idea behind that. That is a terrific answer. And I'm going to take this little clip from our interview and immediately give it to some of the students in our foundations course, because this subject has come up a lot, the singing, because in the foundations course, we're teaching the Kodai approach and there's a lot of singing to train your ear. And people have been asking like, is it okay to sit at my keyboard or sit with my guitar and find the notes that way? And my answer has been, well, not really. You should do the singing thing because it helps you internalize it and it means you'll know the notes and then play them rather than always relying on kind of, you know, trial and error to find the right notes. But that, I think, is a nice complementary answer to what you just said, which is fantastic, which is as soon as you play a note on the keyboard, your audiation, your mental image of what you're trying to play by ear is completely shaken. It's completely ruined. Yeah. and. I know a lot of people watching this, listening to this, will have had this experience where as soon as they play that first note to try and find the right note, they're like, oh wait, what is that? I know it's wrong, but where was the right one again? <laughs> and you can immediately <laughs> lose your sense of the tonal center. You can lose the melody you were trying to remember. I think that's a really fantastic point and an important one. Mm. So if it's not mm. a matter of just sitting in trial and error, could you explain a bit more about how you get them into finding the notes of the melody or the bass line by ear? Is there a lot of kind of drilling interval recognition or that kind of thing? Or how do you approach it? Um, I actually haven't stepped into interval recognition yet within the course. It's somewhere that I've wanted to expand to. Um, I think to keep my lessons short, um, you know, the, the, the course starts out here and then I, it comes down and down and down and I try and get to these two minute lessons. So I haven't gotten to interval recognition as yet. So at the moment it's the humming method for finding the melody it's um it's following we go through a lesson specifically about following the bass line 
also using the humming method and then using the baseline to um, as a starting point to find what the chords are so it's kind of that sort of start with humming the melody then go to the bass line use the bass line to find the chords once you've got the chords then that's where all the fun begins and you can start trying out some different rhythms and things like that very cool well i was yeah. i was asking partly to make sure we made the point that you don't need to do a lot of interval recognition one thing i really admire about your course is that you get people doing this without them needing to master a, tol a ton of ear training because i think a lot of yeah a lot of people who go down the route of trying to play by ear discover something like interval recognition or sulfur and while those are fantastic tools well worth learning yeah they do not need to be step one <laughs> you don't need to master all of that yeah. before you start playing by ear and i really love the way your course it just gets people doing it and i think that's something we don't have enough of in music education is just try it see what happens and you can improve your yeah. skills and add these tools as you go but don't feel like you need to master all of that kind of theoretical abstract skill before you sit down and actually do the thing you want to do yeah and i'm a massive massive advocate for just being able to play a song as soon as possible that for me that's the biggest win i try and get people through the course i want them to learn their first song by ear as like straight out the gate because you got to have that quick quick win to realize that you can do it and then have the sort of motivation to maybe go further and you know do your solfege and all that um and I think sort of a, a worthy point is that um, despite the fact that I didn't learn about chord progressions and, and chord functions until university, I also didn't learn about interval recognition and solfege till university either. Um, I was just sort of a pet pianist who liked playing songs by ear. Um, but I think that says something about the, you know, the volume of, of um, even with the skills I had, was able to learn lots of songs and enjoy playing by ear. So I definitely wouldn't rush people into having to learn everything there is to know. Yeah. Yeah, and I think something else you touched on there was that your course is about getting them to playing their first song as quickly as possible. You know, your course is not playing by ear. It's not piano playing by ear. It's songs by ear. And you do structure the whole course as let's play a song. So could you talk a little bit about what goes into that? We've mentioned melody and bass line and, and putting some chords on. What more is there to kind of having a song you could perform by ear versus just, you know, knowing a few of the notes of the melody? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's learning. It's having all those, as you were saying before, it's having all of those sort of tools in the toolbox, um, knowing your sort of basic chords, how they work, how to recognize them, um, being able to pick out uh, your melody and your bass line, and then having the tools to be able to take chords and and be able to play along with the rhythm. So, for instance, if um, if you if someone was like, let's play this song, and there was a drummer then you'd be able to sort of play with the drummer and the sort of rhythm that he would be playing. It's that sort of idea of maybe playing with a band or even if playing solo on a piano, um, being able to replicate the idea of a band, so having that rhythm there. And um, and another thing that we go into in the course is um, is breaking down riffs. So And by a riff, I mean... Um, sort of quite often with piano songs, particularly ones on the radio, they have, um, you know, a, a really pretty intro, you know, piano part or something like that. Or, you know, maybe in the in the chorus, there's, um, you know, a really recognizable bit that sounds a bit complicated. And that's always the bit that people want to learn because it's, it's the, the kind of cool or complicated bit. And what I try and get people to recognize is that even those complicated bits are still... Um, are still basic when we strip it down. So it's teaching people, there's a whole chapter in Songs by Ear about how to um, break down those riffs into the sort of, into their chords and and make it seem easy in your head so it's easier to actually play. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, that was something I loved in your masterclass at Musical You on Arranging by Ear was that point that if what the listener is conscious of is the hook or the guitar riff or something, that's something you want to factor into your arrangement. You know, your arrangement doesn't necessarily start from melody plus 
chorus plus chord progressions you know it, it can start from whatever the listener is thinking oh that is the the catchy bit of the song or the distinctive part of the song yeah and also I mean especially I mean as you say that especially if it's in a different instrument I like there's nothing I, I get really frustrated especially when I see sheet music um for a, a piano arrangement of a of a song and that piano arrangement you know it's got the melody and it's got the chords and then there's that cool as like guitar riff or something and it's a piano solo arrangement but it hasn't got that bit in it it's like what <laughs> that's the funnest that's the funnest part in the song and if i don't have a guitarist with me you can bet that i'm going to be playing that bit so it's thinking about that sort of thing as well yeah, so that maybe touches on something else I wanted to ask you about, which is we've talked about how your course takes an ear-first approach. You are having people rely on their own ear to figure this stuff out, but not in the kind of formal, structured, I am doing ear training, I have mastered these intervals kind of a way. It's much more, not instinctive, but it's much more kind of tied to their understanding of the music they hear and their own judgment about what the notes are or what the important bits are and you've kind of built on this in an ear boot camp course that really focuses on what we might call active listening and kind of waking up your ear I'd love to hear you talk a bit about that and how you think it relates to this overall skill of playing or arranging by ear yeah I'll, I kind of um it was through the process of doing the songs by ear course and I actually um as I said I I, <laughs> I had thought it was going to be this huge thing with their training and everything and then I realized that I could actually get people to play a song with this much information which was was the major sort of um driving force behind the idea of piano panic actually um and it was after I put the course together that I realized that um if I really am talking about taking people from zero piano experience, which I do say, um, I actually need to get them just listening properly because um, anyone that's not a musician and even so many musicians, we are used to listening to music as a background activity. We're used to going shopping and they're just being music on at the mall or in the grocery store. We're used to having the music on while we're doing the vacuuming. Like a lot of probably uh, the majority majority of the music we listen to is just passive in the background. And um, even when we have headphones on and we're only listening to music, sometimes we're not even thinking about what we're hearing. And so there's this sort of initial uh, step before learning by ear where we sort of need to actually just bridge the pathway between our ears and our brain and so that's what my ear boot camp is it's uh, a daily lessons daily training I do like a live video and some assignments and assignments is the wrong word that sounds like schoolwork but some activities and um, we go step by step from from complete passive listening through to every day making new observations about the music we hear and by the end of the boot camp um, I kind of send people on with a, a new appreciation for the music that they listen to every day. Terrific I I think this is a big part of why I was so keen to bring you on as our new resident pro for piano at Musical U. Um, we're, we're sadly saying goodbye to Sarah Campbell, who's been our pro up to this point. She's uh, getting getting busy focusing on other projects. But I was so mm. delighted when you agreed to come on board because what you just described is, I think, such an important outlook on how to approach playing by ear. You know, if you go online and look for play piano by ear, you'll find a lot of stuff that immediately puts you on the keyboard, like trying to trial and error your way. It assumes you have good technique. It, you know, there's, there's so much that's wrong with it from my perspective, compared with an approach that says, let's begin by waking up our ears and making sure we're hearing what we should be hearing and listening to music as a musician would. And then let's start deciding for ourselves where are the right notes and, you know, using our voice to find the right notes and giving ourselves the tools yeah. without rushing to master every abstract skill. And I think it's such an elegant and effective 
outlook. I'm sure that's why you have so many happy students with your Songs by Ear course, because you've made it not just bite-sized and manageable, but actually effective and, you know, delivering the result of being able to play a song by ear, which is no small thing. That's something most musicians can't do. Um, so I wonder you could talk a little bit about um, coming on board at Musical U. We've been so delighted to have you as our new resident pro for piano. Um, what kind of stuff are you working on there? Wow, I mean, thank you for all those lovely compliments right after each other, by the way. <laughs> that made me feel really excited. I was like, yeah, <laughs> let's be a really happy student. <laughs> um, coming aboard Musical U has been really cool, and I've just been so excited about it because it allows me to reach um, even more people, and I just am so excited to be involved with Musical U with anything because as you say we, we have like the same sort of a really similar approach and a really similar attitude to sort of non-exclusivity in music and everyone can have a go and everyone can do it they just need those keys to the city and um it makes me sad when people think that uh that playing by air or being a musician is just this thing on the other side of a brick wall and they'll never get there that it's I, I think that musical you is just opening the door and just saying come on everybody <laughs> we can all learn by and I just think that's so cool um yeah and so at the moment um I'm working on the December resource pack and that is about chord progressions I think <laughs> yeah, I'm actually I'm actually filming it tomorrow but I wrote it last week so I've kind of um been concentrated on one thing at a time but yeah it's a I think it's about one four five six minor chord progressions and the different things we could do with that which there's so many different things I mean I got sent the subject the topic and I was just like well this is a can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> well, for anyone that listening or watching who hasn't come across this idea of resident pros before, at Musical U we have a lot of training modules on different topics. So for example, we have modules that teach you the ear skills for recognizing a one, four, five, six chord progression. But where our resident pros come into the picture is developing video tutorials for specific instruments. So Ruth is working on piano for us. We also have guitar, bass and, and singing. And the idea is to kind of bring it to life on the instrument and give you the specifics to play around with those ideas on your instrument. Mm. And Ruth, I've really enjoyed your videos so far for how you bring that creativity and enjoyment to it, which is really what we're, what we're most looking for in those resource packs is to kind of bring it to mm. life in a way that makes it all fun. Because I think when you're, when you're just looking at a web page and, and reading or doing interactive listening exercises, there's the danger it gets a bit dry or repetitive. So yeah, mm -hmm. we, we love how the resource packs help people kind of get hands on with their instruments and bring it to life. Yeah, it's awesome. And, and I love it um, because it allows me to um, uh, just sort of do, pick the fun pit and teach that <laughs> uh, without the responsibility of making sure they have all the background info, which is what you guys do. So it's great. Nice. It's a great... Uh, partnership <laughs> so tell us a bit more about piano picnic the website is pianopicnic.com but where people where can people go to learn more about your songs by ear course or the seven day boot camp we talked about before yes so songs by ear is pianopicnic.com forward slash songs by ear and uh you might want to say piano picnic for me because i know that it sounds like puck knuck when i say <laughs> it with my oh, well, i am certainly not the uh, person to go to for a clear accent no one has a clue where I come from. <laughs> picnic, um, P-I-C-N-I-C dot com. Perfect. Wonderful. <laughs> I'm going to take that sound bite and put it on my, uh, <laughs> on everything. Um, and the, for the ear boot camp, which um, is run periodically. So I should say Songs by Ear is only open for enrollment uh, a few times a year. So, but you can sign up to the wait list to sort of come on board the next, the next time it comes through and to sort of tie you over. I do regular air boot camps. Um, they were five days, but now they're seven days. I've just extended them and it's free. And as I said, you get all those daily lessons. The, um, this link to sign up is my.pianopitnic.com. So just the my in front of it, um, forward slash ear dash 
Cool, and we will save everyone the careful typing and make sure we have direct links to those in the show notes for this episode. So Ruth, it's been such a pleasure talking with you today. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I would love if we could send people away with a, a big piece of advice for playing by ear. There's been a lot of kind of good tactical and mindset stuff in our conversation today. Mm -hmm. But if you had to send them away with one thing that could help them, what would you say? Oh, I would, I would, it sort of reminds me of um, some advice that I actually received when I was quite young. Um, and I had a, saw a guy that was playing by ear performing and um i was like that's amazing can can you give me some advice and he said um just keep playing keep playing a lot and one day you will be a natural player and my advice to everyone today is that that's bad advice <laughs> you can't just you can't just keep playing um and keep learning pieces and just hope to one day i mean it will take a lifetime to to one day just be able to play by ear it's something that you need to learn about how music works you need to build your ear skills and your listening skills and all those things that we talked about today those are all things that you have to work on in order to gain that skill i think that's fantastic advice to leave people with because yeah the bad advice you were given i think is all too often given or assumed and it doesn't have to be a lifelong process if you actually give it the attention it deserves so I'm glad we finished with that. Uh, Ruth, you. <laughs> it's been such a pleasure. I, I knew it would be interesting to hear your own backstory and how this perspective on teaching playing by ear had developed where it had come from. And it, it certainly has been fascinating. So just a big thank you for coming on the show today and sharing all of this fascinating info on playing by ear. Thank you so much for having me. It's my favorite subject. Honestly, I talk about it all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, one more thing. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to like it on YouTube, and if you haven't already, please also subscribe to our channel there. That's going to help make sure you get all our latest videos as soon as they come out, and it also helps us reach more people, which means more episodes, better guests, and everybody wins. So please take a second to like this video and hit subscribe.